And, and you know what? It's important. I, I wanted to kind of talk about because you know we. I think I think people got the point with the amino acids, and, right? Um, and <laughs> and the importance of it. And for sure, I'm telling you from personal experience, it is the bomb. Uh, so I highly recommend it. But how do you see? You know, we sat down not, not too long ago with Dr. Anthony J who wrote uh, Esther Generation um, and his take on the effects and, you know, Rudy's huge on this and we've been seeing, you know, so many young people being affected now by food, right? Just the estrogenics or exposure and, you know, from plastics, um, I mean, just from personal care products to uh, house products, you know, we're smearing it on our skin, we're drinking it, we're eating it. We're Where do you it. see that nowadays? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen the effect in your practice. Are you seeing younger and younger patients now as a result of this chemical like, soup that we constantly live in? I mean, we're seeing it from a from a hormonal perspective. We see it every day. So I, I was curious as to how, do, how does that translate into what you do every day? Well, so we're seeing sick people. Uh, and so we measure their levels of environmental toxins mm -hmm. and heavy metals when they first come. And we find that virtually everybody's toxic, wow. okay? They have gasoline additives and they have benzenes and they have glyphosate and they have, you know, they have insecticides and pesticides. I mean, I don't know if you remember us, you tested the three of us and yeah. we were all toxic. And glyphosate, yeah. very toxic <laughs> with glyphosate. Yeah. And we're pretty healthy Wait, individuals. Did you say, did yeah. you say gasoline additive? Yeah, MTBE wow. is a gasoline additive. It's an octane booster. Oh my gosh. So with all the gasoline that's burned, it's all right. over the environment. It's it's in the groundwater. Jet fuel. It's everywhere. Right. Okay. And the levels are the levels in almost in most people are very high. Wow. It's funny. I just had a woman. Not funny, but I just had a woman who lives in a first floor apartment. She's in her sixties. Mm -hmm. She's really careful with her food. Like everything is organic, and she's just like really careful. And when we did her profile, her urine profile for environmental toxins. This MTBE chemical, usually the level that I see around here is between 5,000 and 7,000. And her level was 60,000. Wow. And I'm racking my brain with her. Like, where is this coming from? Right. Do you have an old car with a leaky exhaust? Right. You know, are you using gasoline? Are you a painter? Do you wash your brushes in it? Do you work on cars and you're full of grease? Do you wash your hands with gasoline? Mm -hmm. You know, are you a closet gasoline sniffer so that you can get high? <laughs> hey, you never know. There is. <laughs> it, does exist. it does exist. You never know. So I'm going through the list with her because I'm trying to figure out like, where is she getting this? Because I got to shut this off. Right. You know, I got to find the source of it. It turns out that, that her um, apartment is only maybe 25 feet from the street and she's at a bus stop. Oh. And the bus stop is where the Stopped. bus drivers take their break. Oh my God. And they oh, wow. leave the bus on. on. And they have a sandwich or a cup of coffee or whatever they're gonna have because they got a 10 minute break in their route. And that bus fume is coming into her apartment. Every day, all day. And she's breathing this stuff in and it's poisoning wow. her. Wow, wow. And, and we don't even consider this stuff, you know? No. I mean, who tests for these environmental toxins anyways? I mean, most general practitioners don't, right? No, and no. It, it, just like you said, they just push medication. So, and, and have you seen it? Because um, we've seen it so much on the decrease, of, uh, like endocrine disrupting chemicals, we're finding so many young men with, I mean, levels of testosterone that are astonishing. Yeah, well, I mean, it's not, and you guys are looking at testosterone, but yeah. you look at, you can look at profiles of all these other hormones too. Yeah. And um, and then you just look at infertility rates, yeah. like sperm counts and sperm motility, yeah. right. and how many doctors now are running clinics, fertility clinics, mm -hmm. like trying to help people have babies, yeah. Yeah. and it's a disaster yeah. because we're poisoned. I mean, none of this existed 50 years ago. None of it. Yeah. It's I, all so it's all us to ourselves. It's our toxic world, modern yeah. toxic world, and yeah. you know it's a good segue from. The, the building blocks to now the complement to the building blocks. So the, the perfect amino protein, amino acids are the building blocks of our founda foundation of our hormones or muscles. But besides the building block, you need the right hormones to get them there. Yeah. So, and to me, when I understood, so endocrinology has become something I love a lot and endocrine disrupting chemicals. It took me a little time to really understand that um, because as you are saying, so when you check those levels, everybody's toxic. There's one study where they tried to do, they were looking for a phthalate study. 
the plasticizers, yeah, yeah. and they could not find a placebo group. They could not find a group in the U.S. that had zero phthalate exposure. Yeah. And phthalate is known as the anti-testosterone plasticizer. Yeah. So the whole society, they found it in breast milk, in umbilical cord. So now you have that not only you have uh, people even in their 20s, worse in their 50s and 60s, who don't have the right building blocks, right. don't have enough protein, don't eat the right amount of protein, right. but they don't have the right hormones to even if they have the right building blocks to put them together. That's so right. we're getting a hit from both sides. Yep. Mm -hmm. You don't have the good nutrition, you don't have the right hormones, yep. and a lot of times, it's not because of the patient's fault, like this lady. No, she, did, people... and she tried to do everything right. Yeah. So she got exposed to something that look, Thank God we have smart guys like you who can really sit down and think about it. Yep. But the average doctor, the average patient, the average scientist may not even think about this because as you said, this is something new. It's only the past 30, 40, 50 years mm -hmm. right. that the exposome, so much things we're exposed to now, right. is really affecting our daily health. Right. And putting those together, I think, takes really Dr. House type to really put it together it and really bring it to the common person and to be like, Look, we need to go deeper than just, okay, let's check your cholesterol, what's your blood pressure, see you next year. Right. So yeah. again, kudos for doing that. So what yeah. would you recommend is... I have one more, one more oh. just example of this, which is, I used to, when I, when I first did my residency, I was a pediatrician. Mm -hmm. And I've told the story before, but it's so dramatic for me. I, so I was, I'm, at a, I'm at a very good uh, University of California, San Diego. The chairman of the Department of Pediatrics was like one of the most esteemed guys in the world. And every Friday he would make rounds with us, mm -hmm. and we were going around the we were going around the hospital, and we'd look at all the the kids. And one day he stopped in front of a little crib, and there was a 14 month old kid in there, and he said, um, "Listen, you guys, because uh, there's like 14 or 16 of us residents, and one person had that as their patient." He said, "Most of you guys haven't seen this patient, but when we're fin finished with rounds, I want you to go around and examine this kid." because you'll probably never see one in your lifetime. He said, now an average pediatrician who's seeing 30 kids a day, works for 40 years, you won't even run across one. But in case you do, you remember this morning that you've seen one. Now this kid has autism. Hmm. Now the incidence of autism in 1974 super low. Yeah. was no. super low. He said one in 100,000. And a pediatrician would never see that many. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing incidents of autism in the one in 20, one in 30. Wow. Okay. Now these children are damaged. They're environmentally damaged. This isn't a gene problem. It, it's, it's these children are damaged. They're toxic. They're toxic with metals and chemicals and plastics and all the stuff we're talking about. Oh my and goodness. their brains are vulnerable and probably their mothers were toxic. Mm -hmm. And you know, a pregnant woman dumps her toxins into her baby. Yeah. Well, we're, we're just finding microplastics inside of breast milk. I mean, the report yeah. came out a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. And so, so this is a, you know, you look at, is there a future for the human race at the rate <laughs> we're going? You know, it's, it, you know, men can't, can't pre, men and women can't reproduce or at a level that's 50% or less than what it used to be. And the children that we're making are damaged mm -hmm. And then you look at the incidence of um, cancer in children, and it's soaring. That in you know three, four generations, are we going to even be here? Right. You know, we like to preach about that. We actually say, I actually say a lot that you know, I'm sure you heard the saying, "Hard times make hard times make uh, strong men. Strong men make good times. Good times make weak men. Weak men make hard times." And we're at that point of we're in a very difficult situation and we don't have strong men because they're being affected by these EDCs they're being they're inf uh, with infertility yeah. doc will mention about it but he read a paper where the average donor needed to have 60 million sperm and now they brought it down to 15 million because they can't even keep up you know with yeah. the production right so how our society is being affected today by that in regards to you know obviously besides drinking filtered water avoiding plastics all these things Organic versus non-organic foods and a lot of people can't afford everything organic because as you can see inflation Things have gotten expensive and the average person can't afford it What would you recommend because as we know, you know vegetables have pesticides herbicides and insecticides mm -hmm. What would you recommend it's better to get organic meats or organic vegetable and fruits? Even if you avoid the dirty dozen, what would you what would Mikoff do? I would say do both 
<laughs> okay? But if you can't, <laughs> if you can't, and you're eating a lot of meat, yeah, you meat. Make the meat good. Yeah. Okay. So organic. Because they concentrate it. Yeah. You know the animals concentrate it. Mm -hmm. And so non-organic animals are given hormones, yeah. and they're given antibiotics, mm -hmm. and they're given feed that is Corn. saturated with glyphosate. Yeah. And atrazine. It's yeah, atrazine, uh -huh. and so it's 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 even worse. So they so 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 you know a gram of meat has a lot more than a gram of cucumber in terms of these things. <laughs> wow, okay. And if I may ask, because I just I kind of want to make a point to our viewers, um, the the woman that you saw with the uh, gasoline additives in her in her system, what were what did she come to you for? What were her some of her symptomatology? What was she complaining about? Uh, a lot of body aches and pain, trouble sleeping, mm -hmm. memory loss, brain fog. Right. Um, and so the point, the point that I was trying to make is, and yeah. that I, was, I was thinking you saying this, you know, this woman eats organic, you know, I'm pretty sure she tries to take care of her health. She's really active. She's really on top of her game. Yeah. And I'm sure she went to a ton of doctors and they told her, you're just a hypochondria. It's on your head. Just, you know, yeah. just, it's, you're, you'll be fine. Take an antidepressant, you know, right. that, which they're prescribing like Skittles, right? right. right. And, and it's just what Doc said. So my, my message to you, someone watching who, you know, because... I know that's been a lot of doom and gloom, and believe me, we're solution guys. We're yeah. not doom and gloom, but we have to give you enough doom and gloom to make you convinced, right? Right. Um, and to take and, it seriously. And to take it seriously. Take to it take seriously. it seriously, especially nowadays, because it's a critical time. Uh, but if you're someone that is experiencing some of the symptom symptomatology, and you've gone to a practitioner who's just told you that's all in your head, and try to give you a, an antidepressant, seek deeper, right? Oh, Seek more oh, options because I think that there's yeah. more and more now. I think we're seeing a, a little bit on the other side of the spectrum, you know, a healers come back yeah. that dig a little deeper, right? right? And so if that's you, please, please, please dig deeper and continue to ask questions. And, you know, if you want to call us and we'll point you in the right direction, trust me, we will keep trying. Um, and, you know, one thing I wanted to say, because when we start talking about EDCs, endocrine disrupting chemicals, for us on this side, it's a little easy for us to understand when this, the lingo tends to be a little complicated. And when I try to counsel patients, sometimes it's hard for them to understand. So one thing I like to say is the human body has a, it, it it's, works like clockwork. We are as strong as our hormones. Our hormones are the weakest link. And the way I like to think about endocrinology, it's like an expensive Swiss watch, right? With the internal timing, the clock, everything. Imagine you have that clock, and they throw in a little handful of sand in there. Mm -hmm. What would happen to that watch? This is what those toxins do to our body. Right. So and it affects many things. It affects hormones, testosterone, infertility. It affects cancer. Brain. It affects brain. So that's why we see a lot more ADHD, neurodevelopmental disease, a lot more MS, Parkinson's Anxiety. disease. Anxiety. So there's so much. You know, when you look at the effect of EDCs, it's not one. You can't even. We can't even quantify. Right. I think it touches at every system in the human body right. so we're only just learning about this you know i like to say we are right now in the midst of a crazy experiment companies are dumping 300 million tons of glyphosate a year 80 million tons of atrazine a year pesticides in california it's everywhere the the wash off of all those things 80,000 chemicals are in use only two to three thousand have been studied so they're just dumping all of this Yep. And then we're seeing disease and we're starting to put them together. Right. So for the average individual listening, it's not just treating disease. It's also trying to prevent disease. Mm -hmm. How do we prevent exposure to a lot of those compounds? And that's what we're saying. We know it's more expensive to buy the organic meat. It's more expensive to buy the, the, the organic vegetables. But you know what? It's worth it. Of course. Uh, the, the, the FDA, the D, they're not looking out for ourselves. If we don't look out for ourselves, we don't educate ourselves, we know where the exposure is coming from, then yes, you are going to just need to be treating disease. Our goal is yes, we'll be here to treat, but we also want to help you prevent. Yeah, and yeah. educate. What would you, to the cousin of endocrine disrupting chemicals would be electric magnetic fields or sensitivity. You mind touching brief on that? We don't have to get deep into it, but I want to get your perspective and your belief in it since you're deep into the EDCs. Yeah, and I can tell you, I can give you personal experience on this because mm -hmm. this just happened a few months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, a very famous guy in the field. I, I was going to give his name, but I'm not going <laughs> to give his name. It was over at my house, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, "Have you had your house checked out for electromagnetic fields?" 
And I said, kind of, we're careful. Mm -hmm. So he says, call this guy. So this guy comes over to our house. And I'm, so he says, lay down in your bed. So in our bedroom, there's no electronics at all. Mm -hmm. There's no TV set. We don't charge the um, cell phones. There's no electronics at all. The wow. bedroom is clean. Okay. And about two years ago, we installed a remote device so that all the electrical flow in the master bedroom and master bathroom would be off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we didn't ever turn it on because we were having trouble getting, because the room is really dark. And then how do you get from <laughs> the, the bedroom? There's no electricity in there. So you need a battery operated light in there. And we're just like, oh, we're not going to do it. There's no electronics in the bedroom. We're okay. Wow. Okay. So he says, lay down on your bed. I lay down on my bed and he's got an electrode and it's hooked up to a voltmeter. Mm -hmm. And he measures the voltage. So this is standing voltage in my body. And it's 1.4 volts of standing voltage. Now, normal is 0 0.015. Wow, that's a okay. huge difference. It's a huge difference, a thousand times too much. <laughs> okay. So he says to me, reach up your hand. So there's a headboard there, mm -hmm. but I re he says, reach up your hand so that you, you're touching, you're not touching the wall, but you're close to the wall. And on the voltmeter, it goes from 1.4 to 18. Wow. Wow. Oh my okay. God. 10,000 too much. Yeah. <laughs> so now he says, okay, give me the, the switch that turns off the thing. And he clicks the switch. And on my body went like, oh, no. I could feel it. Wow. wow. And the thing goes, goes to point oh three, no, like I could feel it you massively, and so Talk, I'm you like this guy's phone number that you can get. <laughs> I'll give his phone. <laughs> Absolutely want to speak to him. I'm gonna geek oh, out for this. He's crazy with I'm this. Crazy 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 about about this. stuff. I'm insane. Let, let I will show you the. You. I, I can't show it on here because we can't do it. But yeah. I'll. I videoed this whole thing, and I'll show when we're done. I'll yeah. show you the video on it. Okay. So I'm like, like wow, that's incredible. So then ever since then, I've been, you know, we go to bed, we figured out the darkness thing uh, and we click the thing. And so the, 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 the bedroom, the master bedroom is totally electrically EMF dark. Wow. Now yeah. I wear an aura ring. I've been How did that prove? I was going to ask you. I'm getting between a half an hour and 45 minutes more. Wow. of deep sleep wow. every night wow. since the, the electrical fields are off. That's a lot. It's Ooh. a lot. That's yeah. a lot. That's a great You know, name. as you're saying that, I'm picturing my bedroom yeah. with mm -hmm. the TV. Mm -hmm. My phone is being charged right mm -hmm. here. Um, you have like another electro I give him some system. Oh, I give him some, some dirty electricity filters <laughs> that he won't install because he thinks it's woo-woo. And I'm like, Doc, this but, is going to help you. But, yeah. Doc. So, yes, so we know there's a lot of this. Tell me yeah. what the effect on the human body is, what you felt personally, yeah. but what can that translate to into as far as disease and or, or problems? Optimizing your health is only a scan away. Select the QR code that fits your profile best, and we look forward to hearing from you at the Medical Health Institute.